Now we'll go into another concept which is specified by the standard under 5.3. If you look at 5.3.2.3, you will see the clause reagents and consumables acceptance testing. So this is what we are going to talk about in the this video, the acceptance testing of new material in the laboratory. The standard says each new formulation of examination kits with changes in reagents or procedure or new lot or shipment shall be verified for performance before use in the examinations. Consumables that can affect the quality of examination shall be verified for performance before use in the examination. Enable 112 in addition says the laboratory shall check each lot of control and reagent against an earlier tested or in use control or reagent lot. The laboratory can follow guidelines mentioned in Annexure 2. Records of comparative data shall be maintained. So this is a important uh, activity the laboratory has to do and in the case of control we already talked about the parallel testing that is your lot verification and you are running it parallel to the uh, existing uh, lot of uh, QC. So, but in the case of reagents and in calibrators also you have to find out a mechanism to find out whatever you are reporting will be correct only when you do the lot verification and documentation as it says is very important. All the comparative data should be recorded and maintained. So, why do we need to do acceptance testing? Because there are many things of that affect the quality of reagents. The while transportation, the whole physical transportation itself can take some breakages or whatever, some kind of an alteration, the humidity, the temperature. And so, what we have to do about it is before you even think of acceptance testing, you have to assure the quality of your supplies. Before it comes in, make sure that there is some kind of a temperature control during transport. And then when you are storing it before it is issued also that you make sure that it, these things are stored correctly. So that your acceptance testing is just a process to help out the final steps of it and unless you are holding these uh, steps in the transportation and storage, uh, the acceptance testing is won't be of much of a use at all. So now we go to LABL 112, lot verification is needed for all reagents, quantitative and semi-quantitative and qualitative analysis. In this video, we will discuss only the quantitative lot verifications. Please check details for the other uh, kinds of load verifications in the QC module volume 2 and whatever be the case there is a QSP required for acceptance testing. If you look at 5.3 again the laboratory shall have a documented procedure for the reception storage acceptance testing and inventory management. So acceptance testing is part of the QSP that you would write under 5.3. The mechanisms should be defined for both quantitative and qualitative tests and what are the mechanisms, acceptance limits, all should be defined in your QSP. So some directions that can be considered while you are writing your QSP for standard, in this case we are always talking about statistical or quantitative tests. The reagents and acceptance testing may be defined for reagents as well as calibrators and you have to decide on the acceptance limits. You also need to say whether the acceptance testing has to be done at all medical decision points or clinical decision points. A verification is required. The, the material you will use for lot verification, generally lot verifications are done using samples. It can be done using quality controls also. And finally, you need to say what is your acceptance criteria. Do you want to do put quality specifications like TE and Sigma into your acceptance testing format? All these things should be written in your QSP. We will talk about both these processes. So CLSI has explained this is EP26A lot to lot verification can be done using sample or using quality controls. So let us uh, see the difference between the two new lot reagent or calibrator you can use the sample after you run the test using the sample you estimate the difference or the percentage difference between the runs and judge acceptability and if it's okay you have to, you can use it for reporting. If it is not okay you have to repeat and find the root cause or if it is not working at all you have to reject that lot. So in the case of the using QC also you can do you have to specify your acceptability what is your total error that you will accept and what is the sigma that you will accept for that reagent and if it is found okay you will put it into use if not okay you will do the same thing about repeating or rejecting or however the case may be. Let us examine how you will do 
both of these things. If you are using sample for lot verification, samples are to be done in triplicate ideally with the old and new lots and understand the medical decision points and understand the acceptable percentage differences. In the QC soft, there are tools for both the mechanisms, both using sample and using the quality control. So it's easy if you do the exercise and put in the values, you will get your uh, results. If you are using a QC for lot verification, you can set better quality specifications like TE and Sigma. However, matrix effect may be an issue, especially with tests like immunoassays. So, uh, both are advisable. It's your choice. How would you would want to do this? Method, by using sample, run the same sample. It has to be, sometimes you may need to pull it because if you are going to run the same sample with the new lot and the old lot and in triplicate, that is you are calling for six runs consecutively. So, you may need to pool samples. So, it can be done that way also. Individual or pool sample in triplicate using the old and new lot of reagents and find the percentage difference between each of these using the formula. Percentage difference is equal to new lot. This is your average of the new lot minus the old lot which is, has to be absoluted again and divided by the old lot value multiplied by 100 and then you set your acceptance limit. So, that is very, your calculation is one thing, setting your acceptance limits is another thing. Acceptance limits generally is uh, set at 1 SD level, can be done, 1 SD is the, how much I will take the difference of and otherwise it can be set as less than 10 percent. A lot of labs just define it as less than 10 percent difference between the two. So, which is also accepted, but it can be more stringent if you put it as 1 SD that will give you a better idea about how much of uh, difference there will be in the reports also. Using the new lot reagent, run the QCs at all levels. If you have got three levels of QC, all the three levels and at least eight runs are required and find the mean and the SD and using the formula that we talked about in your uh, sigma calculations and your total error calculations, you find your sigma matrix. The target value is the mean from the old lot. That's only the thing that you have to remember. Target value because you are trying to find out what is the difference between this and the old lot. And then you calculate the sigma performance, judge acceptability as per your protocol. So that is about lot verification. It's a very easy process and it will enable you if you use your uh, QC soft and all these formulas are already incorporated, you just don't need to feed in the numbers. Thank you.